Sakekama stands as a symbol of raw power and majesty in the heart of Africa. Revered for his strength, leadership, and resilience, he has not only dominated vast territories, but also the tales and hearts of many who've witnessed his reign. Often referred to as the strongest lion in Africa, Sikkama's legacy roars as loudly as his voice, echoing the spirit of the wild like no other. Early Life of Sekakama In the vast savannas of Africa, where the dance of life and death plays out daily, the birth of a lion cub might seem like just another fleeting moment. But for Sekakama, it marked the beginning of an epic saga that would later see him crowned as one of the most powerful lions on the continent. Sekakama's birth wasn't marked by fanfare. Like most lion cubs, he came into this world blind, vulnerable, and utterly dependent on his mother. The first few weeks of his life were spent in the safe confines of a secluded den, shielded from the prying eyes of predators and the scorching African sun. The den, often a repurposed burrow or a sheltered thicket, was his entire world during this period. Nursing from his mother, Sekakama began to gather strength. With each passing day, his eyesight improved, his limbs grew sturdier, and the characteristic playful nature of lion cubs started to manifest. However, the world outside the den was not as forgiving. The savanna is a place of stark contrasts, and the line between life and death is often razor thin. Every time he ventured out, even just a few steps beyond the den's entrance, danger lurked. Hyenas, leopards, and even eagles posed significant threats to the young cub. One of the most significant challenges during Sekikama's cubhood was undoubtedly the complex dynamics of lion pride politics. Male lions, not related to the cubs, often see young male offspring as threats to their future dominance. They might kill cubs to bring the lioness into estrus and sire their own offspring. The tales of the savanna are rife with instances of such brutal infanticide. Thus, Sekakama's very existence in those initial months was a delicate balance, often relying on the protection of his mother and the older lionesses of the pride. As Sekikama grew, his natural instincts and the teachings of his mother combined to equip him with the essential survival skills. Hunting techniques, although rudimentary at this stage, were practiced with his siblings. They would often be seen play-fighting, mimicking the adult lion's actions, chasing each other, or pouncing on imaginary prey. These playful bouts, though seemingly innocent, were instrumental in honing the skills he would later require as the ruler of his territory. Yet life wasn't just about learning and survival. Sekakama's early years were also filled with moments of joy and discovery. The vast African plains, the herds of wildebeest and zebras, the birds that soared overhead, and the myriad of scents that wafted with the wind were all sources of wonder for the young cub. His curiosity often got the better of him, leading him on many adventures, sometimes much to the chagrin of his watchful mother. Diseases, too, posed a threat. From parasites like ticks to more severe ailments like feline immunodeficiency virus, the challenges seemed unending. Yet, with the care of his mother and the collective vigilance of the pride, Sakikama navigated through these obstacles, each hurdle only adding to his growing resilience. Ascension to Dominance The African savanna, with its breathtaking beauty and unforgiving laws of nature, demands strength, cunning, and resilience from those who wish to rule it. As Sekakama ventured into his adolescent years, it was evident that he possessed these traits in abundance. The playful cub who once danced under the African sun was now evolving, every sinew and muscle of his body preparing him for the challenges that lay ahead. Often, young male lions are pushed to the peripheries of their natal pride as they approach maturity. This is a rite of passage, a necessary journey into the unknown, filled with dangers and uncertainties. Sekakama was no exception. Together with other young males of similar age, sometimes including his own siblings, he began to form a coalition. Such coalitions are a survival strategy, increasing the chances of taking over a pride and ensuring genetic dominance in the brutal world of the savanna. The initial days outside the comfort of his natal pride were tough. Sikikama and his coalition partners had to hunt for themselves, often settling for smaller prey. They faced challenges not just from nature, but also from other lions. Territories were marked, and any infringement could lead to fierce battles. 
Every scar Sekikama earned during these skirmishes told a tale of survival, a testament to his growing strength and resilience. However, Sekikama's true ascension story began when he set his eyes on a pride he wished to call his own. Taking over a pride is no small feat. It requires strategy, strength, and sometimes brutal force. The reigning males, protective of their lineage and status, would not cede ground easily. But Sekakama, with fire in his eyes and the might of his coalition, was ready for the challenge. The roars of dominance, a prelude to the intense confrontations, echoed across the plains, announcing to all the intentions of the contenders. These battles, fierce and unyielding, were not just about physical strength. They were also a game of endurance, willpower, and mental fortitude. Sekakama, having honed his skills and built his stamina during his nomadic phase, was a force to be reckoned with. After a series of intense confrontations and strategic moves, the day finally came when Sekakama and his coalition stood victorious, the previous leaders either driven away or defeated. The pride was now his to lead. But with this newfound power also came immense responsibility. Leading a pride is not just about ensuring one's lineage, but also about protecting the lionesses and cubs, maintaining the territory, and ensuring a steady supply of food. Sikakama's leadership style was a blend of strength and compassion. While he was fierce in defending his territory and pride, he also displayed moments of tenderness, especially towards the cubs. His roars, a symphony of power and authority, were not just about dominance, but also a call of assurance to his pride, signaling his presence and protection. Rivals and Territory Wars In the vast tapestry of the African savanna, dominance is both an achievement and a relentless challenge. For Sekakama, attaining leadership was just the beginning of an ongoing struggle marked by rivals and territorial skirmishes. In the world of lions, power is fluid, and every day brings a test of might, strategy, and resilience. Territory for a lion is more than just land. It's a statement of power, a guarantee of resources, and most importantly, a legacy for future generations. Sekakama's territory, encompassing prime hunting grounds and strategic vantage points, was the envy of many. It provided sustenance to his pride and symbolized his reign. But such prized territories are also the epicenters of envy and ambition for other lions. Among Sakikama's first challenges were the deposed males, those he had dethroned. These lions, fueled by the desire for revenge and the loss of their stature, often lurked in the peripheries, seeking opportunities to reclaim their lost pride. Their attacks were sometimes direct confrontations, while at other times they adopted guerrilla tactics, testing Sekikama's patience and strategy. But it wasn't just the old rivals Sekikama had to be wary of. The savanna was also home to young blood coalitions of adolescent lions, brimming with energy, ambition, and the audacity of youth. Their strategies were often reckless, marked by the fervor of youth rather than the wisdom of experience. These confrontations, while less strategic, were more unpredictable, demanding Sekakama's constant vigilance. The dynamics of these territorial battles were intricate. It wasn't merely about physical strength. It involved understanding the lay of the land, the positioning of the pride, and often predicting the moves of the rival long before they made them. Sekikama with his years of experience and innate understanding of the savannah's pulse, was a master strategist. He knew when to confront, when to retreat, and when to simply watch and wait. Yet the challenges weren't always external. Within his pride, young males, as they approached maturity, started showing signs of restlessness. These internal dynamics, while less confrontational, required Sakikama's diplomatic finesse. Ensuring the cohesion of the pride while managing the ambitions of the young males was a delicate act. There were times when Sekakama's territory expanded, following a victorious confrontation with a neighboring rival. These expansions, while a sign of his growing power, also brought new challenges. Every inch of the newly acquired land had to be marked, patrolled, and defended. The calls and roars of dominance had to be frequent and far-reaching, signaling to friends and foes alike the change in territorial dynamics. Watering holes in the arid African landscape were focal points of these territorial disputes. 
These essential lifelines attracted not just lions, but a plethora of wildlife. Controlling a watering hole meant guaranteeing a steady supply of food and water, but it also meant constant skirmishes, not just with rival lions, but also with other powerful inhabitants of the savanna, like buffaloes and elephants. Sekikama's pride. In the heart of the African plains, beneath the vast skies and amidst the whispering grasses, the concept of pride carries a profound significance. It is not just a group, but a complex web of relationships, roles, and responsibilities. Sekikama's pride, a reflection of his leadership and legacy, was a dynamic ensemble of diverse personalities, each playing a pivotal role in the grand theater of the wild. At the forefront were the lionesses, the unsung heroines of the savanna. Agile, fierce, and deeply nurturing, they were the backbone of the pride. Their roles were multifaceted. As hunters, they showcased unparalleled teamwork, strategizing and executing hunts with precision. Their unity in the face of danger, be it from a stray hyena or a rival lion, was awe-inspiring. But beyond their fierce exterior lay tender hearts, especially evident when they nurtured their cubs or groomed each other in the golden hues of the setting sun. Then came the cubs, the future of Sekakama's lineage. Playful, curious, and sometimes hilariously clumsy, they added a touch of innocence to the otherwise intense world of the wild. Sekakama, despite his majestic stature and formidable demeanor, displayed an endearing tenderness towards these young ones. He was often seen indulging them, allowing them to play with his tail or climb atop him, their tiny roars attempting to mimic his thunderous ones. Within the pride, there were also the sub-adults, lions who were on the cusp of maturity. This transitional phase was marked by restlessness, ambition, and a quest for identity. Their interactions with Sekikama varied. While the females were being groomed to be the next hunters and mothers of the pride, the males often exhibited signs of rebellion, leading to tense standoffs. Sekikama's leadership style was a blend of authority and empathy. While he was the undisputed leader, his approach was not of blind dominance. He recognized and respected the strengths of each member. With the lionesses, he shared a bond of mutual respect. Their hunts ensured the sustenance of the pride, and in return, Sekekama provided protection, especially during vulnerable moments, like when the lionesses were nursing or when the pride was resting. During moments of rest, the pride often engaged in social grooming, a ritual that strengthened bonds and maintained harmony. Sekekama, despite his position, actively participated in these sessions, it was not rare to see a lioness grooming the mighty Sekakama, a scene that beautifully captured the essence of mutual respect and trust. Challenges, however, were inevitable. As with any group, disagreements arose and tensions flared. These were especially prominent during feeding times when the hierarchy was strictly observed and any breach led to snarls and swipes. Sekakama, while ensuring he got the lion's share, was also the mediator preventing escalations and ensuring that the pride's unity remained intact. The challenges of leadership. Amidst the golden grasses and under the vast African skies, Sekakama's regal silhouette stood as a testament to power and authority. To the casual observer, his role as the pride's leader might seem an enviable position, one of privilege and dominance. But beneath the surface of his majestic roars and commanding presence lay a maze of responsibilities, pressures, and expectations. The first and foremost challenge was ensuring the safety of his pride. The African savanna, while teeming with life, is also a hotbed of dangers. Rival lions, ever watchful for a sign of weakness, posed a constant threat. Every rustle in the grass, every unfamiliar roar in the distance was a potential danger, requiring Sekakama's vigilance. His role was not just to react to threats, but to anticipate them, often having to make split-second decisions that could mean the difference between life and death for his pride members. Then came the responsibility of sustenance. While the lionesses played a pivotal role in hunting, Sekakama's presence during significant hunts was crucial. His strength and strategy often turned the tide, especially when tackling larger prey like buffaloes. However, the savanna's unpredictability meant that there were times of scarcity. During these challenging periods, Sekakama had to manage the pride's food consumption, ensuring that the young and the weak got their share, even if it meant sacrificing his own. 
Territorial disputes, an inevitable aspect of lion dynamics, added another layer of complexity to his leadership. While physical confrontations were a part of these disputes, a significant portion of Sakekama's challenge lay in the mental game. Strategizing, forming temporary alliances, and sometimes even retreating for a future advantage were all part and parcel of his territorial management. Internally, managing the pride dynamics was no less challenging. Ensuring harmony among the lionesses, dealing with the ambitions of young males, and nurturing the cubs required a blend of authority and diplomacy. Each member of the pride, from the oldest lioness to the youngest cub, had expectations from Sekakama. Balancing these expectations while ensuring the pride's overall well-being was a daily challenge. Sekakama's leadership also had a generational aspect, ensuring his lineage meant grooming the next generation of leaders, teaching the cubs, especially the males, the nuances of survival, hunting, and leadership was an integral part of his role. These teachings, often a blend of direct interactions and subtle demonstrations, ensured that his legacy would continue. But leadership in the wild is not just about managing external threats and internal dynamics. It's also about managing oneself, the physical and mental toll of being constantly alert, of bearing the weight of an entire pride's expectations was immense. Moments of solitude, often seen when Sekikama would gaze into the horizon or lie down contemplatively by a waterhole, hinted at this introspective aspect of leadership. These moments, while brief, were his way of recharging, of introspecting, hunting strategies and skills. In the echoing vastness of the African savanna, the act of hunting is not merely a pursuit, but a complex dance of life and death. For Sekekama, hunting was an art, a culmination of skill, strategy, and an intimate knowledge of the land he ruled. As the leader of his pride, Sekekama's hunting prowess wasn't just about personal sustenance, but ensuring the survival of each member under his care. Sekekama, with his impressive stature and strength, was an embodiment of raw power. But hunting in the wild isn't merely about brute force. It's a game of patience, anticipation, and precision. Sekekama's hunting strategy often began with observation. Perched atop a mound or hidden within the tall grasses, his keen eyes would scan the horizon, gauging the movements of potential prey, assessing their strengths, and looking for vulnerabilities. The choice of prey was crucial. While the temptation to go after the large buffalo or the agile gazelle was ever-present, Sekakama's decisions were rooted in a balance of risk and reward. Factors like the age and health of the prey, the presence of protective members in their group, and the environmental conditions all played a role in this critical decision. Once the target was chosen, the next phase was the approach. This was where Sekikama's true mastery shone. Using the natural contours of the land, the play of light and shadow, and the direction of the wind, he would position himself for the perfect ambush. Each step was measured, every breath synchronized with the rustling of the grasses, making his approach almost ghost-like. In hunts where the pride's participation was required, Sekikama acted as both participant and tactician. The lionesses, with their agile forms and coordinated strategies, often took the lead, while Sekikama provided the final push, using his strength to tackle the prey or cut off escape routes. These group hunts, a blend of individual skill and collective strategy, were a testament to the pride's unity and Sekikama's leadership. But not all hunts ended in success. The savannah's inhabitants, from the nimble impala to the towering giraffe, have their own survival strategies. There were times when the prey eluded capture, using their speed, agility, or sheer willpower to escape the jaws of death. Sakikama, in these moments, showcased another facet of his hunting prowess, the wisdom to retreat. Recognizing a futile chase or an unfavorable turn of events, he knew when to pull back, conserving energy for future endeavors. Relations with other species. Sekikama's reign was not an isolated saga. The vast expanse of the African savanna was a dynamic tableau of diverse species, each with its own tale, ambitions, and instincts. As the leader of his pride and a dominant force within his territory, Sekikama's interactions with other species were multifaceted, 
ranging from mutual respect to intense competition and sometimes even unexpected alliances. Elephants with their towering presence and familial bonds often crossed paths with Sekikama. While lions rarely posed a threat to a full-grown elephant, the presence of vulnerable calves often led to tense standoffs. Sekikama, with his keen sense of strategy, usually gauged the mood and intentions of the matriarch, ensuring a respectful distance. These encounters were less about conflict and more about mutual acknowledgement of each other's strengths. Hyenas, the laughing scavengers of the savanna, were frequent players in Sekikama's story. Often seen as rivals, hyenas and lions have a relationship that's both competitive and opportunistic. While confrontations over a fresh kill were common, with Sekikama and his pride often having to defend their meal against hyena clans, there were also moments of reluctant coexistence. In situations where a large carcass was available, Sekikama would sometimes allow hyenas to scavenge, maintaining a watchful eye but recognizing the savannah's shared bounty. Buffaloes posed a different kind of challenge. These formidable herbivores, with their sharp horns and powerful build, were among the prized hunts for lions. But bringing down a buffalo was no easy task, and often required the combined efforts of the entire pride. Sikikama's role in these hunts was critical, his strength often being the deciding factor. Yet buffaloes, protective of their herd, didn't hesitate to confront or even chase lions, leading to intense battles of wills. Among the more peaceful interactions were those with giraffes and antelopes. While they were potential prey, Sekikama's interactions with these species were often marked by a certain grace. There was an understanding, a rhythm to these encounters. The chase, when it happened, was as much a dance as it was a hunt, showcasing the primal beauty of the wild. Legacy and progeny. Every leader, no matter how dominant, is but a fleeting presence in the ceaseless ebb and flow of time. Yet true greatness is not measured by the duration of reign, but by the legacy left behind. For Sekakama, his most enduring legacy was manifested in the next generation of lions, the progeny that would carry forth his lineage and the tales of his legendary reign. Sekakama's cubs, birthed under the protective shadow of his might, were beneficiaries of both his genetic prowess and the wisdom of his leadership. From their early days, these cubs showcased signs of potential greatness. Their playful antics, while seemingly innocent, hinted at budding hunting skills, leadership qualities, and the strategic acumen essential for survival in the wild. As they grew, the lessons imparted by Sekakama became evident. The young males with their budding manes exhibited a confident demeanor, often venturing to the fringes of the pride's territory, testing their boundaries and gauging their own strengths. Their roars, while not as thunderous as Sekekama's, carried the promise of future dominance. In their eyes, one could see a reflection of Sekekama's indomitable spirit, a hint of the legacy passed down. The female cubs, on the other hand, were groomed by the pride's lionesses, they quickly learned the nuances of hunting, the art of teamwork, and the importance of unity. Sekakama, in his interactions with them, displayed a protective tenderness, ensuring that they were well prepared to take on their future roles as mothers and hunters. Yet, the journey of Sekakama's progeny was not devoid of challenges. As they approached maturity, the dynamics of the pride began to shift. The young males, driven by instinct and ambition, faced the daunting challenge of establishing their own territories. Some formed coalitions reminiscent of Sekakama's early days and ventured into the unknown, armed with the teachings of their father and the legacy of their lineage. Vulnerabilities and Challenges Beneath the iconic mane, the powerful build, and the resonant roars of Sekakama lay a reality often overshadowed by his majestic stature, vulnerability. Every creature, no matter how dominant, faces challenges in the relentless theater of the wild. For Sekikama, these vulnerabilities were a mosaic of natural elements, human intrusions, and the very dynamics of lion society. Nature, in all its glory and fury, was a formidable adversary. The African savanna, while bountiful, could be mercilessly unpredictable. Seasons of plenty were often followed by prolonged droughts, 
turning lush landscapes into arid expanses. Water sources would dwindle, and prey would migrate, forcing Sekakama and his pride to traverse greater distances in search of sustenance. These journeys, while essential for survival, exposed the pride to unfamiliar territories and potential confrontations with other predators. Diseases, often undiscriminating in their onslaught, posed another challenge. Epidemics, like the canine distemper virus or the occasional outbreak of feline immunodeficiency virus, threatened not just individuals but the entire pride. Sekakama, despite his strength, was not immune to these afflictions. Any sign of weakness could be exploited by rivals, adding another layer of complexity to an already precarious situation. Perhaps one of the most intricate challenges for Sekikama came from within Lion Society. Young and ambitious males, fueled by their innate drive to establish dominance, frequently challenged Sekikama. While many of these confrontations were ritualistic displays, some escalated into fierce battles, testing Sekikama's strength and resilience. The ever-present specter of a coalition overthrow, reminiscent of his own rise to power, was a stark reminder of the cyclical nature of dominance in the wild. However, the challenges weren't confined to the natural realm. Humans, with their expanding territories and often conflicting interests, posed a unique threat. The encroachment of pastoral lands led to occasional confrontations with herders protecting their livestock. Sekakama, Recognizing the potential danger of these encounters, often opted for strategic retreats, prioritizing the safety of his pride over territorial disputes. Poaching was another dark shadow on the horizon. The allure of a lion's mane, driven by misplaced notions of valor or black market demands, made lions like Sekakama targets. While he mostly remained insulated from direct encounters, the distant sounds of gunshots or the occasional discovery of traps were grim reminders of this ever-present danger.